The Wiggles were once a worldwide children's music sensation, touring the world and making millions off album sales and television deals. Some go as far to say they were on track to become the next Maroon 5. I think that The Wiggles might be the next Maroon 5. However, a series of poor decisions by the members resulted in a downward spiral that no one could ever even dream of recovering from. And given the outcomes of these decisions, I'm genuinely surprised more people aren't talking about this. But before we get into the video, thank you so much for watching. My name's Devin, this is Song Psych, and I really appreciate you checking it out. If it wouldn't be too much to love, all you could give this video a like. Give Song Psych a subscribe. What, if you hate the video, you can always unsubscribe, but just do it. Come on, like, if you don't, though, it doesn't really matter. Like, nothing really matters. Nothing lasts. Once upon a time, these guys, Anthony, Murray, Jeff, Greg and Philip all spawned in Australia. Anthony, Jeff, and Murray were studying to be preschool teachers when they all met, and Anthony and Jeff had this band called the Cockroaches. Why wasn't Murray in the band called the Cockroaches? Uh, Murray didn't want to be in that band anyway, like he doesn't care. He didn't want to be in that band anyway. And one day, Anthony wrote a song for the Cockroaches called Get Ready to Wiggle, which ended up inspiring the band's name because they were like, yeah, kids love to wiggle. wiggle. So the Cockroaches were a super serious band, right? You're probably thinking like, oh, this is just a little one-off, a little passion project. No, they had a manager, they had a team. So basically the Cockroaches manager, Jeremy, talked to this little startup called uh, ABC, ever heard of them? To get the Wiggles a super serious record deal. Getting that record deal was a bit of an uphill battle, but the Wiggles debut ended up selling 100,000 copies. They'd perform at preschools and hundreds of people would come to see the Wiggles. This was their epiphany. We can really do this. We can really be super serious artists, Jeff exclaimed. Their first tour was so successful, in fact, they quit their day jobs to play their little wiggle song. And don't even get me started on the second album. Let's talk about how serious they were for that. Oh yeah, yeah, they weren't messing around anymore. The dog days are over. Okay. They were starting to refine their style a little bit more. And this is when they started to be color coded. But for a while, they had a lot of trouble getting a TV show. Like they kept asking Australia and they were like, nar. No, 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 thank you. But then this all changed when they went to, drumroll please, the United States of America. The Wiggles going to the States ended up being a huge pivotal point for their career, massive. One time they performed at Disneyland and the producers of Barney and Friends just so happened to be there and they noticed them. This led to the Wiggles having their first late night show performance on Barney and friends, and this really helped them out. They still had some work to do though. They performed for 8,000 people in Sydney one week and like 20 people in a parking lot the next week. So they still really had to sort of firm up that fan base, you know? It was a little inconsistent now. We needed to sort of firm it up, give it a massage. Fast forward to 2002, and the Wiggles ended up getting their own TV show called You Guessed It, The Wiggles. This took them to the next level, one that they couldn't even Fathom. They were making $45 million a year for, for singing about banana. But then in 2004, things started to get a little rocky. Anthony was gonna leave because he had a medical condition that was pretty serious actually. And the Wiggles were touring all the time, so it didn't help that whole thing. Then in 2005, their lead singer Greg had to get a double hernia operation, so he had to leave in 2006. And this is where things started to really go downhill because that was like their front man. How are you gonna pivot from that? You can't. Except they did, they replaced him with this guy named Sam. Sam Moran, not kidding. So actually this isn't the downfall part yet. I mean, the transition between the singers was pretty smooth actually, because after all, their audience was just a bunch of dumb little fucking useless ass fucking sucking babies. And they can't tell the goddamn difference between the two guys, they're just babies. No, babies just want their stupid milky. They just want to sing stupid fruit salad and they just will go about their day and cry and well, I mean, this kind of was the downfall. Like it did end up changing their whole sound. Like it could have totally been the downfall, but like this is nothing compared to what the Purple Wiggle did. You do not want to know what the Purple Wiggle did. Oh, you're not going to like it, but we'll get to that later on. Stay tuned. So the new guy, Sam, he's more of like an opera singer, right? And Anthony wasn't really doing that. Like he was kind of a little bit more lo-fi, a little bit more vulnerable with it. So uh, they had to rehearse all their songs in totally different keys to fit Sam's style, this new guy. But yeah, this ended up not really being the downfall of their career. If anything, this was great for them. They even had their own theme park at one point called the Wiggle World. You could go there and ride the Wiggle Coaster. 
really mm. ridiculous. And like sit in the fruit salad. They served fruit salad there. It was so disgusting. All right, everyone. So actually this is where the downfall comes in. So wake up. I don't care what you're doing right now. I don't care if you're cooking. I don't care if you're passively listening. Get the hell over here. It's crazy to me that not that many people know about this because it's just so bizarre that that the Wiggles would do such a heinous crime. Um, basically, here's the thing. So the Wiggles had a really strong streak of success. They were doing 500 shows a year. That's more shows than there are days in a year. Thank you. They had their own move and Wiggle World really catapulted them to an unprecedented level. F but some may say that their immense amount of success got to them and that it caused their downward spiral. This new singer, this Sam guy, if you couldn't already tell, bad news. The fame really inflated his ego and he wanted to expand the Wiggles franchise even more than it already had. Wiggle World wasn't good enough for Sam. But here's the thing about Sam. Sam's a simple guy. He grew up in rural Arizona. He always dreamed of owning his own farm. But no one in his family believed in his dreams. They said, you will never own a farm, Sam. Be nothing. You have to stay here and you have to work for the family company. You have to work for our hat store. Sam didn't want to work at the hat store. Sam had dreams of his own. So Sam was like obsessed with this idea for opening up a Wiggle Ranch. He would always bring up the Wiggle Ranch at the Wiggle dinners and all the members would always be like, no, stop, enough with the Wiggle Ranch, we're not doing that. So then in 2012, Sam launched the Wiggle Ranch and they only sold Wiggle Mountains. Kids loved it, quite frankly, the parents couldn't get enough. Their children have never wanted to eat healthy snacks this much before. Some even say the Wiggles walked so Michelle Obama could run. Uh, but Sam had to get this thing up and running quick and secretly. So he never got FDA approval. He never even tried to actually. He couldn't even be bothered. And everyone got salmonella and like I'm talking everyone. Like Sam did not get the salmonella because he wasn't so naive to eat the melons. You don't get high on your own supply. That's what Sam said. Sam said that, not me. I didn't say that. So then Sam had to tell the rest of the Wiggles what he did and they were not happy. No, they were not. This created some serious tension in the group, but they hid it because they work with the government since they're funded by the education department. So they just swept it under the rug. It was like, you know, like, oh, what happened to the, to the Munson family? Oh man, like they all just disappeared. Like, don't worry about what happened to the Munson family. They just went on a trip. They'll be back. Oh, you'll be, you'll be seeing the Munson family real soon if you don't keep your dirty mouth shut. That's what the government said. I think all the tension and the secrecy really got to the Purple Wiggle because uh, he shot someone in the head with a rocket launcher in the middle of the Boston Common. And uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is when the Wiggles went on tour with Kid Leroy, um, very little people know that those were actually not the real Wiggles. They were fake. They were plants. They were lookalikes. Some may even compare them to lizard people. Quite frankly, those Wiggles aren't going to come back from that. And the government knows. So they were just like, listen, kid, Leroy, you're going to have to bring out these plants and make it seem like the Wiggles are fine. Everyone's going to remember this. It's like the Wiggles are great. The Wiggles did not kill anyone, especially not the purple one. Just bring them out, right? Kid Leroy was like, fine. So... Never meet your heroes, I guess. Well, that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you're awesome for that. If you enjoyed it, it would mean a lot if you gave this video a like, gave songs like a little subscribe. We upload every Wednesday, mm, so, most of the time. Love you guys. La la la. If you have any requests for people you want me to do a little deep dive into next, a little rise and follow who, leave those thoughts in the comments. You won't. Bye.